Buffalo is the city of no illusions. But that doesn't mean everyone knows the truth about it. In the summer of 2011, a film crew from the National Trust for Historic Preservation hit the streets of the Nickel City. Their goal? To let Buffalonians tell the story of their city, its past, and its future like only they can. And like only they know. These are their words, their experiences, their ideas. This is Buffalo Unscripted. I am a preservationist because one, I don't think you could build a house like the houses that were built 50 years ago. I don't think we have the money, most families don't, nor do I believe that the, the current set of builders build them like this. These houses are similar to redwood trees. They cannot be rebuilt. They are a one of a kind, every single one of them, and that once they're gone, you, you just can't get the materials, the old growth lumber that goes into them, the true dimension lumber, it just, it's unavailable. These houses, you, you, in these houses, you could go in the living room and not hear somebody in the kitchen. You, you been in a house like that? They build houses now, you could be in the kitchen and hear somebody three blocks away. How is that possible? In Buffalo, we have most of our housing is over 100 years old, or at 90 approaching 100 years old. So in regards to preserving it, yeah, I think we should uh, because you can take that same old house and you can strip the innards and redo it for less than building something that's new that doesn't architecturally fit. One thing that Buffalo has is character. Um, as the old phrase say, just because you are a character don't mean you have character. But Buffalo has a lot of character. Um, and the older residence is what give it its character. Uh, I have worked in my own house to try to preserve what I see and I actually consider my house that I'm a caretaker for it, not, not the owner for it, but I'm taking care of it for future generations. You see the windows, the doors, the frames, the floors, the pillars, everything that's in, in the homes. We should do as much as possible to keep these buildings up. Uh, we've seen in other areas where these houses have come down because they've gotten to the point where you can't salvage them. We want to be proactive. We want to make sure that we work on these properties, that they stay up to code, that we do whatever it is we have to do. You got it. It's standing, protected. Yes. I'm, I never really thought about whether I was, I was a preservationist. Um, I, I'm a, I, I care about people. I believe I am a pres preservationist. I didn't realize I was till really we got involved in with this threat from. Uh, from the Public Bridge Authority, and uh, we saw how important it was really to stick together and, and to how hard you have to fight to hold on to your neighborhood. We don't want to be preserving houses without preserving homes. Um, so if, if preservation means preserving buildings, I'm not a preservationist, but if preservation means preserving neighborhoods, I'm a preservationist. I think it's very important to save uh, Buffalo's older and historic, more historic neighborhoods. Um, mainly because they, you know, they, they were gifted to us by our ancestors, and we just have them for now, and we're supposed to give them on to, you know, I mean, our, our future kids, I mean, our future kids' kids, and we can't destroy that investment. Even more on a vernacular level, I think that we should definitely try to um, rehab and cherish some of our uh, just residential neighborhoods and whatnot. I think it's really hard with the high vacancy rate and um, the mayor's plan for demolition that we're losing pieces of our neighborhood every year and that's really what Buffalo is about. I mean you've got the big icon and the big architectural gems but if you don't have the neighborhoods you're missing a whole other part of the city. The neighborhoods define who we were. They're also a symbol of who we can be, who we are now you know, what we can become. So if you look at a neighborhood as disposable, then you see yourself as disposable also. I'm a preservationist because, one, I don't like what's being built today. I mean, perhaps if you have a lot of money and you can hire a fabulous architect, you can have something really beautiful. Um, but you could look across the road here and see whole, um, businesses made of corrugated tin, you know, or, uh, what shall we say, cinder blocks. 
I think anybody who cares about the place they live in has to consider themselves a preservationist, unless you live someplace where you've got uh, plastic walls and, and, and plastic houses and that sort of thing. There's something featureless about these buildings. You know, they, even when they're new, they look like they've been built to be abandoned. But when you live in a real city uh, with brick and mortar, and uh, it's the sort of thing that you want to preserve. I am a preservationist, and I think that uh, most people who have educated into where this world is going should be preservationists as well. I think we have a very disposable culture right now and that really frightens me because we're creating a tremendous amount of waste both from demolishing homes, electronic waste, and we need to use what we have and we need to use as much of it as possible and keep it out of landfills, both mental and physical landfills, and really recycle that and put it to new uses for the betterment of all. Preservation is using our assets to their fullest ability. And I think too much of uh, American history in the past 50, 60 years has been throwing away a usable past, throwing away resources that still have a lot of life left in them, and, and replacing them with, with technologies and materials that are just not sustainable. You know, we should make it useful, make it usable. Because we've got a lot of beautiful things here. But we also, why waste what we have? Why not use it and build it and fix it? I call myself a preservationist, but I also recognize that we don't live in a museum. We live in a dynamic community that has um, homes built over a century ago that are fine examples of the craftsmanship that existed during the 19th century and early 20th century. But I also know that they have to adapt and change based on how we need to um, use those buildings today. I consider myself to be a preservationist in the sense that I would, I would greatly recommend preserving things that you believe are good. And it's, it has nothing to do with the past and what was good in the past and maintaining the past. I think I'm a selective preservationist. I believe that you have to make choices as you transition. You can't keep everything. You want to deliberate deliberately know what it is that needs to be kept uh, and then the rest of it's got to go. For example, if that building over there is a thousand years old, if it was a terribly built building and it smelled bad, then we should probably get rid of it. But if it was, if it's a, if it's a building that is good, I would preserve it. it. It has nothing to do with how old it is. And the reason it's got to go is you can't have growth without transition. And that means you got to clear the deck once in a while. So I do consider myself a preservationist, but also uh, somebody who has my feet grounded in reality. I'm absolutely a preservationist. In fact, I've turned myself a building hugger. <laughs> There's a uh, resonance in people's souls when they're in a place that is old, that has this kind of um, real texture to it. And Buffalo certainly is one of those places. A structure that's been around for 50 years or 100 years, which is longer than I've been here, deserves respect in and of itself. And it's almost got a life of its own. I see the be these beautiful buildings in Buffalo, and I want to see things happen in them. You know, the old grain elevators. I don't want to talk them down. I think that there's a lot of um, potential there for, you know, murals, for public art, for uh, community spaces, for people to be there. It's something that I would love to be a part of in the coming years. And that just wantingly tear something down just because you want a parking lot or it's old, it just, it doesn't seem right to me. I, I, it just seems disrespectful to that structure and to all the people who made, built it, who used it, who lived there, who've been in and out of it, who've been around it, whose life it's been part of, it just doesn't seem right. I think to, to live in Buffalo and be sane, you have to be kind of a, a preservationist. Uh, there's so many things around us that, uh, that aren't here anymore. Um, so many parts of, of people's childhoods that, uh, that have gone away. So many parts of people's uh, family that have moved away. Um, to live in Buffalo is to kind of live uh, partially in stories and in the past. We can't preserve every aspect of the past and we shouldn't aspire to and it would be stupid to try. But where things have value, I think it's in our interest for all kinds of complicated psychological and cultural and social reasons to try our utmost to find uses 
uh, for them. Communities that have deep roots, that have multiple layers of human intervention over the years are more interesting. And if they're well cared for and preserved, they're more beautiful. We're better off not believing that we invent the world every morning as we get up. We're better off, I think, believing, although it may be a prejudice of mine, we're better off believing that we have a past that constitutes resources that support us as a society and as people as we move through life. We can't reinvent history. We can't reinvent the wheel. Once that stuff goes, it's gone. And we're very fortunate that actually some economic decline happened here. Now, don't tell anybody that, but some economic decline happened here for about 20, 30 years. And it actually kind of put Buffalo under a little bit of a cloche. And we kind of stayed the way we were for a long time. But the cloche is off, and we're celebrating the things that people once thought held us back. I'm definitely a preservationist. The National Trust for Historic Preservation a privately funded nonprofit organization, works to save America's historic places. Learn more about our work in your community and in communities across the country by liking the National Trust on Facebook.